Hi and welcome to Belgian Diecast Restorations. I'm Johan and at the moment we are looking at my contribution to this month's Diecast and Modelers Community Challenge on Facebook. The challenge is called More Than 4 and the aim is to restore or refresh a model with more than 4 wheels. This Matchbox King size Scammel Tipper truck, produced from 1968 up to 1970, has 3 axles with a total of 6 wheels, so I think it qualifies for the challenge. This very nice old truck has seen better days. The paint is flaking and there's a horrible bend in the canopy of the tipper, so that needs to be straightened out. Luckily there are no breaks or cracks in the window as I couldn't find any replacement windows for this model. For the challenge I will try to restore this truck as close to factory state as possible. So let's get out the tools and give this model a makeover. The bottom plate of the truck is held by two rivets. I drill them out and this removes the bottom plate holding the axle with the front wheels and gives access to the windscreen. We also have the plastic suspension which is warped in a strange way. It's not just bent upwards like most suspension parts of that age, it looks like it has been melted. Probably by placing the truck with its bottom plate on a hot surface or having it lie upside down in a blistering summer sun. Next I drill out the rivet of the horns on the roof which also holds the window unit in place. This was the easy part. Now I take off all the tires and there are a lot of them. This way I can grind away the axle lens to remove the wheels. The front axle is shorter than the two rear axles. Mixing those up can have unfortunate consequences. The axle holding your tipper provides to be quite challenging, as the axle end is buried deep inside the hole. Now I can remove the tipper and slide out the plastic bit that holds it straight. And finally we have the plastic front grille, this just pops out with a bit of pressure. Now it's time to strip the paint. The yellow paint on the tipper is almost completely gone, but the body needs another bath in caustic soda. In the meanwhile I can address the bent canopy of the tipper. I put it on my watchmaker's anvil, then use a piece of wood and a small hammer to tap it straight again until I'm satisfied.
When the body finally comes out of the caustic soda, it's an improvement. I use three different kinds of wire brushes to remove every remaining speck of paint. I notice that the body has a slight bend. I compare it to another Scammel truck model and it appeared to be normal. Watch until the end to see if I was right. Afterwards I wire brush body and tipper to prepare them for priming. I do the same with the bottom plate, the axles and the horns. The interior of the horns gets a drop of malt of chrome. Next I drill a 1.5 meter pilot hole in both rivet posts. And then I drill a 2 mm screw thread and fix the screw. Tipper gets a white primer coat with AK Interactive. The body gets a grey primer coat of the same brand. The color choice for the tipper is easy, as Tamiya Camel Yellow is exact the dark yellow shade I need. After a lot of testing I find that Vallejo Dark Vermilion Red will suit this truck nicely. It's a bit brighter than the original red, but if I compare it to the paint inside the model, the faded red color of the truck appears to be the result of years of exposure to dirt and sunlight. And finally I go over the painted parts with Vallejo Polyurethane Gloss Varnish to protect the paint and give the truck a nice gloss. This can't be repaired, so I have to dig in the parts drawer for a new king size suspension. This one is in much better shape, it just needs a little cleaning.
As I mentioned earlier, the window unit is in great condition. It has no cracks or scratches, it just needs a good polish with polishing compound for car headlights. With all the parts painted, polished and cleaned, we can reassemble the truck. First I attach the front axle and wheels back to the bottom plate. I create a new mushroom head on the axle end using my hammer and my watchmaker's anvil. Remember, this was the shortest of the three axles. Next I attach the two rear axles with the wheel hubs and repeat the process. Next I snap the front grille in place. Then I can put the horns in place on the roof and drop in the window unit. The rivet on the horns is too shallow to drill out, so I just fix it with a drop of super glue and off camera I add just a tiny bit of baking soda to make a powerful weld. Of course I won't be using the old melted suspension plate. The new one as source has been bent upwards over the years. I carefully straighten it off camera using some hot air. With the suspension in place I can close up the bottom plate. You might have noticed that the superglue I used to attach the window unit clouded parts of the windows. I later opened the truck back up and polished the windows again with a q-tip. I didn't record this, but you'll see the result in a minute. Finally we can attach the tipper. First I slide in the plastic part. Then I fit the tipper over the holes. I slide in a new axle made out of a pop rivet nail, which I cut to the right length. I use a small drop of super glue to fix the axle in place. The decals for the doors are quite simple to reproduce, as they consist only of a triangle inside a circle. The only problem is that since the logo is white, I have to print it on white decal paper, together with the red background. And it's almost impossible to match the red on the decal, exactly with the red of the paint. So forgive me if the decals stand out a little.
So let's see what we started out with. This Scammel tipper track was in need of a new paint job and needed to have the canopy of its tipper straightened. On top of that the suspension seemed to have been melted and was warped in a very peculiar way. And here is our truck after restoration. With a new paint job, cleaned and polished windows, a new suspension plate and its tipper looking brand new. In hindsight, when looking at pictures, I noticed that the top of the tipper should have been bent slightly more upwards, but there's always a risk of breaking it clean off. And this is when that apparent bend in the chassis came back to haunt me. The new suspension pushes the front and mid wheels downwards, and that's when I discovered that the rear wheels weren't touching the ground. So there was a bend in the chassis after all. Since the truck was already painted and assembled, I couldn't hammer it straight again. So after some careful manual bending, I managed to straighten the chassis so we have all six wheels on the surface to meet the more than four challenge. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy my videos, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and tick that notification bell. More restorations are coming up. See you in the next video.